the second most valuable thing is my paring knife. Again, I, I tend to like Wistoff knives, uh, but it doesn't really matter. Now, this is a great tool, and uh, this is what I use to do these carrots. It's called a mandolin. This one happens to be a Japanese mandolin, but they're, they're not expensive. They're like about $25, $30. And when they get dull, you throw them away. The old French mandolins are about 300, and you don't throw them away, you change the blades on them. See how beautiful that is? Mm -hmm. That panko really stays uh, crispy. Some of it does. I mean, I can see, I mean, the oil would have a limited use. But since it's fresh oil that I'm just using today, I'm going to make it through all these crabs without the oil getting too old. But in the kitchen, we only change the oil like once a week. And then really we do it by color. When it starts to look black and nasty, we just change it. I mean, that's the rule. Anyway, in um, so the mandolin great tool to do like a julienne and when you want to slice things very very thin without the blade in it great tool this one is really sort of a funny tool it's called a fish spatula but it's really one of the handiest tools in the entire in my entire toolbox they're not a, this one happens to be um, again a Wustoff one but Lamson makes one that's about fifteen dollars and it is the perfect tool for doing almost everything, from flipping pancakes to flipping things in oil. It's absolutely better than uh, a flat spatula. It just it has a little curve to it, if you can see that. And it is flexible, out oh, and hot. <laughs> <laughs> and a uh, great tool. This is a whisk. This is what I'm going to use to make the vinaigrette next. Uh, I mean, I could use a blender, but I just happen to like the, uh, to have a small whisk always available. This is a great tool. This is called a microplane. Uh, the great story about this, a woman decided she wanted to, I can't remember what it was, I think it was uh, take zest off a lemon. She went to her husband's workshop and, and borrowed a rasp and uh, started taking the zest off a lemon, which is what this is great for, also for grating cheese. And then it became this incredibly great tool so that now they're made for the kitchen in all kinds of different great. This is one of the great inventions. I mean, I wish I had invented this. It's so great. It's really, it's one of these things. The last tool that I want to make an argument for is is uh, this little peeler. This is a, um, this is a potato peeler, or uh, any kind of a peeler, really. And it is only about three or four dollars. They're made in Switzerland, and it sounds weird, but this is the best peeler in the entire world. <laughs> Instead of uh, doing, like most people when they peel potatoes, go away. This one, you actually come this way. And um, they're wonderful. They always stay sharp. They're the only thing in my kitchen that no one can keep their hands on because everyone borrows everyone else's and you forget who owns what. And let's see, what else do I have? Oh, last one is um, this. And this is a really funky tool because it's just, it only, usually in the kitchen I don't like tools that only have one thing that they do because who has room for all that stuff? This is a, a reamer in terms of getting juice out of a lemon or lime, but there's another trick. If you don't happen to have one of these, this is a great trick. You can take your tongs and actually get juice out of a lime by just pressing it together. It works great. I mean, it's just so simple. I mean, who thought about it? I mean, because then you've got that leverage to really get the juice out. In fact, let's move on to what I want to do next, which is to show you a, a quick vinaigrette. Vinegar, vinaigrettes are basically just, what we're going to do is just suspend some oil in an acid to put it on the greens. Now you can do that a whole bunch of different ways. 
Uh, I could throw some vinegar in it. I have some red wine vinegar right here. Or I could use this lime just to start the process. Now the thing is, if you are going to put a lemon or a lime in a vinaigrette, one of the things you do want to do is to get some of the outside zest. That's the color part of it. There's actually more flavor in the zest than there is in a juice of a lemon or a lime. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in. And in the bottom of this bowl, I also have a little bit of Dijon mustard. The reason that um, I... Now I have to go back to my culinary training to actually explain this, but the Dijon basically helps the oil stay suspended in the, in the acid. So basically I've got I'm going to put a little bit another great tool. I did not remember to bring a tea towel, but if, let's assume this was like a tea towel. We're just going to pretend right here. I would take this tea towel and make a circle of it and put my bowl in the middle of that and it'll stay without me having to hold it. It's a great way just to hold something in place because if it's just down on the surface, it's going to move around. And if you don't have a hand free, it just works works. Now, once I'm moving this, I'm just going to start drizzling in olive oil. You can see it's not a tea towel, but if it was, it would stay in one place. Now, traditionally, when you make a vinaigrette, there are all these rules in terms of you do two or three things. You do it two or three times the amount of oil to the vinegar, but in truth, I just look at it. You know, like when it looks like it's kind of creamy looking, yeah, I think that's probably enough. Now, I also don't like to overdress salads very much, so I don't usually make a lot of vinaigrette on a salad. But making a salad, a summer salad, is one of the great joys because there's so much here at the farmer's market that goes into a salad. These are just greens. There's nothing going on here, but I like to throw stuff. I like a lot of stuff in my salads. Uh, so these are the carrots that I did on the mandolin right here. So you get these wonderful little julienne pieces. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Carrots, beautiful carrots right here. <laughs> beautiful carrots. A little bit of onion. And I'm going to throw some of these beautiful grape tomatoes. Something that people generally forget about in terms of salads is a little salt and pepper on the greens. And I have some cheese. I don't like salads swimming in vinaigrette. I just really, I think that there's a lot of stuff going on. And so I tend not to dress too heavily. But now the real trick of salads is not so much this part of it, it's really the plating of it. And the fun stuff. This time of year, berries are really one of the great things to add because the sweetness really helps the vinaigrette bit of and then the stuff, of course. We love the stuff. Of course, it's a whole crab on it, but this because this is going to be a taste. Anyway, that's my demo. It's pretty quick, but I'd be happy to enter.
the whole thing. Yeah, Brad Carrots.